Stick up. Murder. Oh, I get it. We're going places. My cigarette? Shut up. Get your stuff back and we're through with you. Good evening, Mr. Lanyard. I don't think I'm going to like you. I'm sorry if my men were rough, but it was necessary to bring you here. Why? There's a safe I want open. <laughs> Did you forget the combination? Oh, but it's not my safe. Sounds illegal to me. I'll pay $10,000 for the job, Mr. Lanyard. Well, what do you say? No. Sure, you won't reconsider. Listen, whoever you are, I don't like your voice, and I don't like your manners, and I don't like the men who deliver your invitations. I guess that settles it, then. I'm sorry, Mr. Lanyard. And now what happens? A nice torture chamber? Dark dungeon waiting for me? Nothing like that. You're not interested in my deal, so you're free to leave. Take him out. Well, it's been a pleasure. Turn on the lights. You got me guessing, boss. We can crack that safe without Lanyard. I can't figure out why you had us bring him in. I've got an old score to settle with the lone wolf. He got me into serious trouble once. I still don't see it. And now I'm going to do the same for him. How would you like to change your brand of cigarettes, Jakes? Oh. Uh, uh, just for tomorrow. Oh. Hey, that's pretty good. We'll proceed exactly as we have arranged. Mm -hmm. The plans are to be delivered to the War Department just at noon. Uh, you will uh, uh, appropriate them during the lunch hour before they can be copied. Now, exactly what's missing? Now look, Sergeant, just once more. The plans of the new Palmer anti-aircraft gun have been stolen. Understand? Yeah. But they didn't get all of the plans. You see, the inventor Palmer has several of the key sheets in his laboratory. What for? He's working for the simplification of the loading mechanism. Yeah, not that you'd understand that. Oh, now I get it. The crooks only got part of the plans. That's right, Sergeant. Which part? Never mind that now. Our job is to get these crooks before they do any more harm. Any leads, Inspector? Uh, you don't see work like that nowadays. No finesse uh, anymore. No doubt, Inspector. But I'd like something more definite. Well, there are very few men can open a safe like that. One of them is Eddie Elk. Yes? But he's in Sing Sing, doing 50 years to life. Oh. There's one other man. I suppose he's in Alcatraz. No, as a matter of fact, he's here in Washington. Good. And what's more, he used to smoke Regis cigarettes. Regis cigarettes? I found that on the floor in front of the safe. Fine, Inspector. I had no idea the police were so efficient. Will I pull him in, Inspector? Now, wait a minute. I just said he could have done it. Oh. As a matter of fact, he's been out of this racket for a long time now. Retired years ago. But I once swore I'd soak him away for life. I'd still trade my pension to get him. Who is he? One of the cleverest cracksmen in the world. Michael Lanyard, the lone wolf. You're on the spot, Scarface. <laughs> oh, Mike. What's the matter, Pat? Why doesn't Jameson die when I shoot him? It makes me so mad. Jameson, why don't you die when you're shot? I'm too tired, sir. This is Miss Patricia's fourth crime of violence today. She claims she's liquidating the Red Weasel's mob. <laughs> Something for me? Regular G-Man outfit and real handcuffs. Oh boy! Come here, Pat. I have something to tell you. 
A detective story? No, it isn't that. This is about you. It's serious. You, you mean about the kitchen window? Honest, Mike, I no, didn't No, no, mean... it isn't that. I'm going to send you away to school, Pat. Oh, Mike, why? Well, if your mother were living, she'd be able to take care of you properly. I'm afraid I'm not very much of a success as a father. You're the swellest father in the whole world. Now, now, no flattery, young woman. Tomorrow, I'm going to take you over to Miss Warren's school for young ladies. Young ladies? You mean sissies. Does Val know about this? Val? No. But uh, when I see her again, if I do... Over the way, Jemison. How many times has she phoned today? Miss Carson phoned at 3, at 3.15 and at 4, sir. At 4.15, tell her that I've taken a trip to Canada. I'm afraid that wouldn't do any good, sir. No? No, sir. She's very persistent, isn't she? Very persistent, sir. Mr. Lanyard, wouldn't it simplify our lives if we were to marry Miss Fell? Well, simplify isn't the word, Jefferson. Anyway, we couldn't. No, sir? No. She's much too young for us. We're an old man, Jefferson. We're only 35. Huh? Well, if we can't marry her, sir, what are we going to tell her when she calls up again? I don't know. You think of something. I can't talk to her. I deserted her at lunch very abruptly. Ah, that explains it, sir. Explains what? What she said, sir. Oh, well, what did she say? Uh, no, sir. I simply couldn't repeat it, sir. Jameson, I think I need a drink. Yes, sir. Oh, I say, sir, look what... <laughs> Gosh, well, I'm glad you came. Mike's planning to do awful things to me. When I get through with that no-good father of yours, he won't be able to do anything to anybody. He's going to send me away to school. Oh, try and get you out of the way too, eh? We'll see about that. Are you mad at him again? Mad? Do you want to see your father torn limb from limb? I think I'd better stay here, thank you. You double-crossing deserter. What's he been doing, stealing the silver? Jameson, what is this woman doing here? Don't heckle me. Where did you go at lunch? A telephone call. Two hours on the telephone? Well, it was a long distance Don't call. try to be funny. Stand up when I'm talking to you. Do you realize what... Sit down. Do you realize what you did to me? No, what? <laughs> you ran out on me. Oh, I'm sorry. Really sorry? Yes. <laughs> well, I forgive you. You forgive me? Mm -hmm, I forgive you. Well, thanks. I knew you'd understand. But there's just one more thing. What's that? The check. Oh, did I forget that? Yes. <laughs> I had to pay it. Oh. I paid it. Oh, well, you know how little things slip the mind, especially when you're busy. How much? Mm -hmm. For lunch? Yes. And you can still walk? Well, you entertained a few friends to keep me company. It was awfully nice of you. Yes, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Well, there's $45. That'll take care of the tip. Fifty. He was such a nice waiter. We must have lunch again sometime. By the way, just for the record, uh, where did you go this afternoon? I was called away on business. <laughs> yes, well, I hope you paid for her lunch. Uh, Jameson, answer that bell. Oh, Mr. Lanyard, I... Oh, never mind. I'll take care of it myself. Now, don't stall. Where were you? Excuse me. Now, listen, Mike. We have company. Uh, are you Lanyard? Yes. Inspector Thomas. How are you, Inspector? Well, it's been a long time. Yes, Miss Carson, this is Inspector Thomas, and, uh... Sergeant Devon. Mr. Lanyard, Miss Carson. How are you? Oh, how do you do? Come in, gentlemen. Well, you're just in time for a drink, Inspector. I'm afraid this is a business call, Lanyard. Oh, oh really? <laughs> well, why don't you and Pat go play jacks or something? Oh, no. No, I like policemen. Isn't every day you meet them socially? Hey, Inspector. They got that guy handcuffed over there, ain't they? Oh, that's just Jameson. He and my daughter play games together. Games? Very suspicious. Miss Patricia, please. Oh, no. Not until you promise. Lanyard. Where were you at one o'clock this afternoon? Oh, thank you, Inspector. What for? That's what I've been trying to find out. Very suspicious. Stick him up. <laughs> See, Jameson, that's how you ought to play. I like him. She's going away to school tomorrow. Uh, reform school. Val, won't you help Jameson get loose? He isn't very comfortable. Mm -mm. Please, Miss Val. Pat. 
Give me the key, quick. Oh, no. Not until he promises to die three times tomorrow. All right, he'll die three times tomorrow, won't you, Jameson? I promise. Come on. Here we are. Now then, Inspector, what's this all about? Well, there's been a robbery. Jewels? No, but a safe was opened this afternoon between 1 o'clock and 2. Well, why come to me? Oh, I just thought you might be able to help us out. No, thanks. I'm afraid I'll have to take you down to headquarters, Lanyard. Why? A cigarette just like this was found in front of the safe. Oh, now, really, Inspector? I know. It looks like a plant. But aren't these cigarettes made especially for you? For me and Carol Lombard. Have you been to see her? No, but uh, we'd like to. Now, Sergeant. So, you'd like to know where I was between one and two? Mm -hmm. Inspector, I have one of the most beautiful alibis you ever saw. She's... Uh... Come in. I thought you gentlemen might be thirsty. Yeah, not a bad idea. Let's hear it, Lanyard. I didn't mean to interrupt, just don't mind. Singer that's with Duke Charles Augusta? Yes. Oh boy, she's Spider. gotten. Just a minute. Does need a wife. Don't want Miss Carson to know about this other girl, huh? I'd rather go to jail, Inspector. Are you sure you had lunch with Marie Templeton? Of course. We're both interested in antiques. I've got quite a collection, you know, and she was coming here later to inspect them. All right, Lanyard, we'll check with Miss Templeton later. But remember, if this story doesn't stand up... I know. I'll be making little ones out of big ones. <laughs> but don't worry. It'll stand up all right. And now, Inspector, how about that drink? No, thanks. We have to go along. Boy, Val, what's your hurry? By the way, where does your alibi live? The Plymouth Hotel. Well, drop in again, gentlemen. Maybe we will, after we've seen that blonde. Funny, eh? Yeah, very funny. <laughs> Blonde, eh? You triple crosser. Now, now, be calm. That whole family ought to be in jail. Well, let's concentrate on Lanyard. Okay, where do we go first? The Plymouth Hotel? Nope. Headquarters. Wait a minute. Are we going to see Marie? Later, maybe. But he's too smart to lie about her. First, we're going to make sure that nobody but Lanyard smokes those cigarettes. What for? Lanyard's mixed up in this business someplace, and I'm going to find out where and how. I still think we should go see Marie first. Funny, they should have found one of my cigarettes. Never mind about the cigarettes. What about that blonde? You invited yourself to lunch with me, didn't you? Well, yes, but... I didn't have a date with you, did I? No. But I did have a date with this other young lady. She has a friend who might buy some of my antiques. Why didn't you tell me so in the first place? I didn't think you'd believe me. Uh, I don't. But you can still take me to lunch. Oh, it's too late now. All right, I'll settle for dinner then. Make it cocktails and it's a deal. So, is this a stall? No, I really need a drink. I won't have to pay for it. I promise. All right. This time, no blondes. Well, they're not all here. Three pages are missing. Well, that's all there was in the safe, boss, honest. 
Palmer must have the missing plans at his laboratory. Yes. Yes. They didn't. You're sure. Wait there, then. The police didn't arrest Lanyon. Well, those dumb cops. No. No, wait a minute. Perhaps it's just as well. I wonder. You mean you're glad they didn't arrest Lanyard? Yes. The lone wolf will get the missing plans for us from the Palmer Laboratory. And this time, we'll plant enough evidence to send him away for life. I'm so sorry. Uh, you're welcome. Lovers. Yeah. So nice. That's right. Her name is Marie Templeson. And she's a very intelligent girl, too. She shares my interest in antiques. Uh, if I had a knife, I'd cut your throat from ear to ear. <laughs> Monsieur? Two planter's punches and a knife. I don't stall. What do the police suspect you of? A crime. It's a really serious, Mike. Mm -hmm. The crime is serious, but I didn't do it. Yes, but can you prove it? Certainly, I have a witness. That blonde. Miss Templeton. I had to have lunch with her. What do you mean you had to? You're a pushover for every blonde in Washington. You're a blonde. Well, that's just my hair. Hard on the brunette. Oh, I see. Men marry brunettes. I still prefer blondes. Mike, you do like me, don't you? You know I do. Cross your heart. Cross my heart. Well, let's get married. We'd be terribly happy. Mm, for a while, maybe. But it wouldn't last. You're young. But not too young. And I am an old man. In the winter, my joints creak. It would be like living with a rusty barn door. Well, we can go to Bermuda in the winter. Or is Egypt. How about Egypt? What? No, too cold. Too cold? Too cold. What? Who is she? Who? That woman you're rubbering at. What woman? Oh, that one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, no. I've never seen her before in my life. You're lying, you liar. On my word of honor, I've never seen her before. And I never forget a face. Michael, my dear, this is wonderful. You never forget a face. Uh, won't you sit down? Michael, darling, you're just pretending. Oh, surely you haven't forgotten me. Karen? Uh, this is Miss Carson. How do you do? <laughs> How do you do? But you couldn't have forgotten me, darling. We had such a good time that winter in Budapest. Budapest? Do you remember the Daniel? Liar. And the police asking you about the robbery at the Royal Palace? Robbery? They knew it was the work of the Lone Wolf. But, of course, they didn't know what I knew. And what did you know? That Michael Lanyard and the Lone Wolf were one and the same person. Remember? I'm beginning to remember. I'd like to have a talk with you about old times. I'm so glad you said that. I was afraid you'd think me forward coming to your table like this. No, not at all. I need your advice, if it isn't inconvenient. Of course not. Hey. Business, Val. Business, my eye. Goodbye, Miss Carson. So long, Val. Hey, Mike! Mike! Check, miss. <gasps> You know, I'm terribly disappointed in you. Already? It was much too easy. What was? Getting you to come with me. That silly story about Budapest. Why, even a schoolboy wouldn't have believed it. I didn't believe it. But why did you come? Isn't there some connection between you and a very unpleasant gent I met last night? And if there is? I want to talk to him about cigarettes. Cigarettes? Yes, he's very careless about where he leaves mine. Indeed. We are going to see him? No. Then where are we going? To Angus Palmer's laboratory. What for? To open a safe. 
Oh, no, not me. I don't like safes. Yes, you do, pal. Well, I expected to see you. You have the most unpleasant friends. Forget it, wise guy. Make it snappy. The regular guard's almost due. What did he mean, the regular guard? The men sent to guard Mr. Palmer were persuaded to leave early. Forged orders? Yes. Very clever. There it is. You can't get out. The property is surrounded by an electric fence. A very ingenious man, Mr. Palmer. Come on, quit stalling. The tumblers are frozen. So what? Well, they'll have to be shaken loose. Ah, here's some fuses. Some black powder. Very thoughtful. Light that burner. What for? Here, you open the safe. All right. Where's Palmer taken care of? Yeah. What are you going to do? It's a trade secret. Now, everybody stand back. This might be dangerous. What, oh, with that little pineapple? Expanding gas has peculiar properties. He can't get out. Get your men. Dumb buddy. We told you you couldn't get away. Get to work, wise guy. What if I really can't open this? Oh, come on, get going. Impulsive, isn't it? Open the safe. Everything, don't you? Cigarette, fingerprint, and no alibi. And now, if you'll close the safe, Mr. Lanyard. Anything else you want me to do? No. I think you'll find you've done quite enough. You can go home. All by myself? No escort? No blindfold? All by yourself. Maybe you won't be so smart when the cops get him. Ah, oh, Jameson, it's no fun shooting you if you don't die. No, Miss Patricia, I'm much too busy to die. Please, just once. The way you died yesterday. I promise not to ask you again. 
And I won't have to die tomorrow? No, I promise. Very well, just as soon as I'm through here. Is Mr. Lanyard? Oh! Oh! Who are you? You're Marie Templeton, aren't you? How did you know? Never mind. Come in. Uh, tell me, uh, did you have a nice lunch? Oh, yes. Well, isn't that nice? Sit down. What's that for? Shh. The West Side Gang. Oh. Is, uh, Mr. Lanyard here? You came to see his antiques, didn't you? Yes. How did you know? Uh, that's what he tells all the girls. Um, has he ever kissed you? Who? Mr. Lanyard? Why, she's always been a perfect gentleman. Gentleman? Ha! That's what you think. Have you ever heard of the Sioux City Slasher? Is he the one that... Shh! That's only one of his aliases. Drop that. Poison. Oh! It's not too late for you to escape. No? No. How do you know so much? I've been in his power for five long years. Why don't you escape? I, I can't. His gang, every one of them a killer. But he's the worst. And he's such a nice-looking man. Yes, that's just the trouble. Do you remember Matahari? Spy? His first victim. How terrible. Oh, but that was a long time ago. Yes. Uh, then there was, um, Sonia. Paulette, she killed herself. Did uh, he marry all these women? Miss Sino, eight since I've been here. Eight? Oh, that was only in the last five years. Did uh, he divorce them? Divorce them? He dismembered them. Oh! Another bedroom rug ruined. That'll give you a general idea. Well, hello, Marie. Where have you been? Robbing a safe. <gasps> you feed! What's the matter with her? Never mind about her. What about that slinky dame? Oh, that was business. <laughs> well, don't expect me to say it's nice work if you can get it. Here's the check. I thought we had only one round. Well, I had to draw my sorrows. Good evening, Senator Carson. Good evening. Hello, Senator. Hello, Mike. Hello, oh, Dad. Hello, darling. Mm. Oh. Hello. <laughs> Mike, I want to talk to you alone. Certainly, come in. Listen, I want to know what's going on here. Mike! Now, listen, I'm warning you. Don't try anything else. Mike! Mike! <laughs> well, what's on your mind, Senator? Mike, you put me on the spot. The day at noon, somebody cracked the safe in the War Department and stole part of the plans for the farmer and the aircraft gun. Part of the plans? Yes. Fortunately, the key sheets are in the Palmer laboratory. Any idea who did it? The consensus of opinion seems to be that you did. Ah, that's what the police hinted. You've been here? Uh-huh. Bloodhounds and everything. You see? You see the spot you put me in? Oh, I get it. Senator's daughter in love pact with international spy. <laughs> Mike, this is no laughing matter. The police are all but convinced that you're their man. Wait till they hear about Palmer's safe. What about Palmer's safe? I just robbed it. Oh, not willingly, you understand? It's all part of a sinister plot. You know, mysterious woman, armed men, a ride in the country. All very exciting. But, but, but Mike. Hi, Belle. Let me in, will you? Okay, I'll be right down. 
This mysterious gent, whoever he is, is trying to make me the goat. But won't they be coming here for the rest of the plans? Undoubtedly, but they won't find them. Why not? Because I'm going to give them to you. Me? Oh, no, you're not. But I only want you to keep them for me overnight. Why, what good will that do? My only chance of getting anybody to believe this fantastic story is to return the complete plans to the War Department. But you haven't got the complete plans. I'm going to get the rest of those plans tonight. How? Cherchez la femme. Her name is Karen. What a dirty trick. Well, what do you expect to find in a gentleman's bath? Well, the last time he took a shower, he wore his clothes. I wish he'd be more consistent. Senator. Yes? You know that uh, envelope we were talking about? You'll find in my inside coat pocket. Oh, uh, yes. Well, I, I must be getting along. You're coming with me to the Gregory party? Mike, are we going to Gregory's party? Gregory, who's he? He's a Balkan oil millionaire. Quite the pet of the Washington Society at the moment. He's giving a surrealist party. No costume parties for me. I have work to do. Oh, he's getting to be such a stuffy old man. No, oh, he has very important work to do. Important to all of us. Well, good luck. Good night. What are you and Dad cooking up? Nothing that wouldn't interest you. Well, this afternoon interests me, though. What happened after you left me? Not what you think. I don't believe it. That's the truth. I don't like the girl. Really? But I've got to find her again. I knew it. Why? Because she's got something that the police think I stole. Oh, you can think of a better story than that. Do you know why it sounds bad? Because it's the truth. Well, I guess you're right. You're too bright to think of such a dumb story. You flatter me. Well, how are you going to find her? See this? Mm -hmm. I pinched it from her this afternoon. I'm going to find out where she bought it. Clever of me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> You can buy these in a hundred stores in Washington. Well, not so clever. Well, my only chance is the plaza. Maybe someone there knows who she is. Well, get out. I've got the dress. We got her, Mr. Gregory. Oh, splendid, Jane. Splendid. Look here. What's the meaning of this? You have my plans. What do you want with me? Your silence, Mr. Palmer. If you were free, it would be a simple matter for you to duplicate the plans. But you can't hold me here indefinitely. Quite right, Mr. Palmer. I can't. You were about to embark on a journey, a long journey. Where are the plans? Here. You had no trouble, I trust. Nothing to speak of. Learn you tried to get away once. Such a pity he should go to jail. <laughs> Jenks, you fool. Lanyard's tricked you. These are not the Palmer plans. Do you know where Lanyard lives? Yeah. By the way, have you any idea what will happen to you if you come back without them, Mr. Jenks? Yeah. There's been a slight change in our plans, Mr. Palmer. Your uh, uh, journey will be postponed for a time. Take him downstairs, gentlemen. Two martinis, very dry. And the fence to keep blondes away. Oh, just a minute, Holmes. Do you know the lady who came to our table this afternoon? She uh, wriggled, you know. Ah, yes. The lady who sat down with you. Yes. With the gold dress and the brown fur coat. Yes. Very beautiful. Yes, that's the one. She wore a veil. Yes. Who is she? I don't know. Does she come here very often? Maybe two, three times. Always with the so wealthy Mr. Gregory. Thank you, sir. Gregory. What about our drinks? I'm sorry, I haven't got time. I've got a very busy evening ahead of me. Well, what are you going to do, Mike? I'm not quite sure yet. <sighs> yeah. Well, where to? Oh. Home, nothing. You're going to Gregory's party. This time, I'm sticking like a leech. <laughs> I can't go to Gregory's party. I haven't an invitation. Just the same, I'm sticking. <laughs> Where to? The White House. I'm sorry. He didn't give me any information. 
No, but he said he wouldn't be back till very late. Very good, sir. Oh, really, Miss Patricia, you are... Don't let it bother you, mister. I've been standing here for an hour and I've seen things I ain't seen since my last hangover. <laughs> <laughs> I'd completely forgotten. It's a surrealist party. Surrealist, eh? Well, I can think of a lot of better names than that. Wait for you, Mr. Fentler. Oh, hello. Hello. Pardon me. Can you read? Yeah. Well, look, uh, does this say 666 Square Road? Yeah. Well, that's. Uh, oh, what are you? I'm the forest primeval. What are you? Look, midnight. <laughs> Here we go. What's the matter? You dropped something? Hey. Mice, eh? Oh, just a moment, pal. How did you get my hat? Station <laughs> gentlemen. Roger Beecham. Mr. Charles Fenton. Hey, wait a minute. Are you Charlie Fenton? Yes. Uh, are you sure? Yeah. Oh, now that's a peculiar thing. Charlie Fenton of the October Club? Yeah. Okay. Are you positive? Yes. Oh, that's a very, very peculiar thing. I thought I was Charlie Fenton of the October Club. Maybe there are two Charlie Fentons of the October Club. Oh, no, that's impossible. I ought to know. I live there myself. Oh. And, well, now, wait a minute here. Let's straighten me out. Uh, you're Charlie Fenton. I'm not Charlie Fenton. Who am I? I don't know. Well, I've got to be somebody. Or have I? Why don't you ask the policeman? Oh, there's a grand idea. He ought to know. Huh? He's always taking me home. <laughs> hey, Arthur. <laughs> Upstairs is closed, sir. The party's in there. Ah, oh, thank you. Oh, what? Oh, don't let them worry you. Everything's screwy around here tonight. <laughs> Here's the scotch on the level. The McCoy. You know, this is the first time in my career I ever felt like drinking on the job. Soda? Yes, please. There you are, sir. Thank you. It's you. You shouldn't be surprised to see me. No. Not after this afternoon. I see. 
I haven't enjoyed myself so much in years. Then you did like me, didn't you? Very much. Better than that girl? Val Carson? I like you in a different way. She's silly, isn't she? Yes. How silly. Very silly. <laughs> Now who's silly? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> well, <laughs> I knew who it was all the time. You did not. You're getting to be a terrific liar. I thought you said you didn't like her. Well, I don't. Oh, no. You're very nice. I like you in a different way. I only said that to disarm her. You said I was silly. Well, you are. Yes, I am. I'm beginning to believe you again. You sure you don't like her? Cross my heart. I only wanted her to take me upstairs. What? Gregory's got a safe up there somewhere. Well, why don't you walk? There's a guard on the stair. You can help me. What do you want me to do? Go out on the dance floor and scream. Scream? That's right. Scream as loud as you can. Come on. You screamed. Oh, that, that was nothing. Probably a short circuit. I'm not so sure of that. What's the matter? Something's gone wrong with the burglar alarm. Gregory says to stick around. Okay. Rather an interesting painting, don't you think, Mr. Lanyard? Well, my old friend Gromo. I hope I didn't interrupt your investigation of my study. Well, as a matter of fact, you did. But, uh, another time, perhaps. Yes. I got him, boss. Right here in my pocket. Yeah. Lanyard gave him to Senator Carson for safekeeping. Splendid, Jenks. Come back here right away. Gregory, I'm becoming seriously annoyed with your friends. You won't be annoyed long. I'm afraid that's right, Mr. Lanyard. You're going to the country for air. We're going to let the air in with a little lead. <laughs> You're making a mistake. Why? Because I have half the plan. If you kill me, you'll never get them. That's a problem you needn't worry about, Mr. Lanyard. Take him down the back way, boys. Hi, Mr. 
midnight. Hello. I... That's the man. This man claims you're an imposter. Yes. He wants to ask you a question. Why not? Go ahead. All right, I will, and there'll only be one question. Nobody but Charlie Fenton will know the answer. Are you ready? Yes. Well, uh, I forgot. Oh. Uh, no, no, no. Here it is. Look. Is your wife's name Pearl? Yes. Oh, I give up. Sorry to have bothered you. No bother at all. Oh. We better put him in a cab. Okay, Mr. Fenton. Now I know I gotta go on the wagon. Oh. Oh. Good night, boys. Who are you, miss? I'm Val Carson. Do you know anybody here? Well, I don't see anyone. Oh, yes, there's the man I came with. He'll identify me. Yoo-hoo, Mike! Yoo-hoo! Oh, hello! <laughs> Mike. Do you know this woman? Never saw her before in my life. What? That's all right, lady. Nobody knows me either. Oh! 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 Who did this? A very evil-looking person, sir. Seemed to be looking for something. He didn't find it. No, sir. And he seemed quite upset, too. And he wanted to know who'd been here this evening. Did you tell him? Yes, sir. But Miss Fell and her father were your only visitors. Senator Carson, this is, um... What? They did. I'll be right over. Well, I got him again. What, sir? My half of the plans. I don't understand, sir. I'm playing a game with some people, Jameson. It's called Button, Button, Who's Got the Button? Seems rather a rough sort of a game, sir. Yes, it's getting that way. So you won't talk, huh? What? Okay, smart guy. Come on. This is the end of the line. I'm gonna rub you on. <laughs> Try it. Jerry, knock him off. Look out behind you. Ooh. Next week, the Red Weasel ride. I'm sorry, Mike. But I was listening to the Red Weasel's mob. I'll forgive you this time, young lady. Go get your clothes on. We're going places. Huh? Oh, boy! We're getting out of here before we have some very annoying visitors. The police, sir. Police? They called, sir. When? Just after you left. What'd they want? You, sir. By the way, what happened to Miss Carson? I left her at a party. Rather abruptly, I'm afraid. What again, sir? I had to, Jameson. I was anticipating some trouble and I didn't want her involved. You know, she means, well, a great deal to me. Precious is the word, sir. I'm afraid so, Jameson. Sometimes I wish I weren't old enough to be her father. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, see if you can hurry Pat along a little. Oh, wait a minute. Pour me a whiskey and soda. Yes, sir. Now, hold it to my mouth so I can drink it. You feeling all right, sir? Quite all right. You can put it down now. Uh, leave plenty of fingerprints. Now, answer the bell. But it hasn't rung, sir. I want to see. What is all this? Just a routine robbery, Inspector. Nothing important. Oh, yeah? I'm arresting you for robbery, Lanyard. What have I done this time? Burgled the Treasury? No, you cracked Angus Palmer's safe. The inventor? 
Oh, who do you think you're kidding? We found fingerprints. And you think they're mine? They gotta be. We found another one of your cigarettes beside the safe. You're losing your grip, Inspector. You know I didn't do that job at the war office. How do we know that? Well, didn't you talk to Marie Templeton? Yeah, we talked to her. Well? She never even heard of you. This is one of the happiest moments of my life, Lanyard. Just one moment, Inspector. Miss Carson. Mr. Lanyard couldn't have been at the war office. Why not? Shall I tell them, Michael, dear? Sure, go on. Uh... It won't do any good, Miss Carson. After all, he's Please, a man of... Please, Inspector. Mrs. Lanyard. Mrs. Lanyard? Mrs. Lanyard. Mrs. Lanyard. Yes, we were married at one o'clock this afternoon. Just when your safe was robbed, Inspector. I think this is the worst case I ever worked on. Aren't you going to congratulate us? Oh, yeah, sure. Congratulations, Mrs. Lanyard. Oh, thank Congra you. Well, you don't seem very happy about this. Oh, I'm happy. Well, you should be. All you have to do now is explain away your fingerprints on Palmer's safe. But you don't know they're my fingerprints. Well, we'll soon find out. You can't take my prints until you book me. I know my rights. All right, then we'll take it down and book you. On my wedding night? Oh. Oh, you wouldn't do that, Inspector. Uh, Jameson, bring me a fresh drink. Don't touch that glass. Dust it, Devon. We'll soon see who looks silly. Well, you certainly wrote your name all over Palmer's safe. How is it, Devon? They check, don't they? Just a minute. Check. Why, they ain't even the same type. What? Let's take them down anyhow, huh? I'd look fine booking a man for a crime because his fingerprints didn't match. This is the worst case I ever worked on. Well, it looks like you're off the hook again, Lanyard. But you're mixed up in this case someplace, and I'm going to get you for it. You bet he will. I'm going to check the license bureau. And if you weren't married... Inspector! Uh... Oh. Good night, Inspector. Good night, Sergeant. What's good about it? In my 15 years as a policeman... Are you really a policeman? Yeah. Oh, honest? Yeah, honest. <laughs> thinking? <laughs> Wasn't it, darling? I'm sorry I left you at the party. Oh, that was all right. You're not angry? No, I understand. You're afraid if I went with you, I might get hurt. That's right. Mike, dear. What? I didn't know I was so precious to you. You so-and-so? You overheard me talking to Jameson, didn't you? You know, you're not really old enough to be my father. Eavesdropping. That's another vice you've picked up. That and necking. Mike. What? This is getting serious. It certainly is. Here, I am practically married. No, you dope. I mean the danger. You're in trouble. You don't know the half of it. Which reminds me, we've got to get out of here. Why? I'm expecting some very unpleasant visitors. What's it all about, Mike? I'll tell you later. I'm taking you and Pat to your house where you'll be safe. But I don't want to be safe. I'd rather be with you. Well, I'll get Pat. Mr. Lynn. Look. We'll have to run for it. Everybody duck. Sore. Cop must be asleep in there. 
Yeah. Next time round, pitch this through the window. That ought to wake him up. Oh, boy. Boy, I'm getting dizzy. That guy again. It's that same guy again, sir. Quiet, come on. Lucky for them they got away. Quiet. Come again, sir. What do you think we ought to do now, Sarge? Quiet. That worked out better than I expected. Lots of fun. Mike, could we do it again? You're going to bed. Oh, Mike. What delayed you? Well, Dad, what happened? Who did that? Oh, this? <laughs> Same fellow stole the plans. Fix that fellow with a gray hat? Sounds like him. Looked like a Republican. I know him. That's one more he's got coming to him. We've been playing cops and robbers. More fun. Bedtime for you. Raven, take Miss Patricia upstairs. Yes, sir. Red Weasel was after us. Oh. Beat it, monkey. <laughs> Sorry, Senator, I didn't mean to get you into this mess. Oh, forget it. Why, I haven't had such fun since the Dart administration. Well, Adam, boy, Pa. <laughs> well, well, what happened? What trouble? Well, you could call it that. Mike cracked a safe. Jameson got cracked over the head. I told the police Mike and I were married. And... Married? Are you? Well, not yet. Oh. And we just wrecked a police car. Well, you certainly won't prove a dull son-in-law. Come out of there. I thought I told you to go to bed. Well, where do we go from here? You don't go anywhere, but I'm going to get the rest of those plans. I'm coming too. <laughs> no, you're not. You look very tired. You're going to rest. I'm coming, Mike. Oh. Mike! Those men are here again. What? Now, off to bed with you. Ah, oh, heck. I miss all the fun. Run along. Let him in, Jameson. It's Karen and the man who hit you. I'm going too. Mike, let me handle that slinky dame, will you? Oh, no, no. Well, if she tries any more of her little games, I'll cut both your throats. Yes, sir. Step right in, sir. I'll tell Mr. Lanyard you're here, sir. You! None of that. Jameson, why did you do that? An eye for an eye, sir. Very satisfactory, sir. Those persons are here, sir. Show them in. Good evening. Good evening. I'll speak to Mr. Lanyard alone. Well, I hope you know what you're doing. I said alone. Yes, I heard you. <laughs> All right, I'll go. Won't you sit down? Cigarette? Oh, no, not one of those, thank you. Mr. Lanyon. This game of hide-and-seek we've been playing has been very amusing, but it must stop. I'm sorry about that. I was just beginning to enjoy it. Conditions have changed. Indeed. We must deliver the Palmer plans by daybreak or we lose our sale. What has that to do with me? We want to make a deal with you. <laughs> I know, but this time it isn't a trick. We join forces and divide the proceeds evenly. I'm afraid I couldn't. Why not? To begin with, I couldn't put my hands on my part of the plans so quickly. Furthermore, I don't like your friend Gregory.
You know, I'm going to be disappointed, too. Are you sure you won't reconsider? Well, I'm pretty sure. Going so soon? <laughs> you. You, Casanova. Pardon me. Yeah? Quite right, Jemison. Very satisfactory. Very so. Fortunately, I got here just in time. Mr. Lanyard! Mr. Lanyard, Miss Patricia, she's gone. What? Look. Give me 15 minutes, then call Inspector Thomas. Tell him to look for Pat and me at Gregory's. Inside. Well, I checked the marriage license bureau. Nobody by the name of Lanyard's been down there this year. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. Here's the guy that runs the joint. He'll swear to it. Is that true? Yes, indeed. Yes, sir. Yes, indeedy. Hmm. Good. Send out a general alarm for Michael Lanyard, age 35. Black hair and mustache. Wearing dinner clothes. Last seen with blonde companion. Driving yellow sports car. Arrest on site. Come with me, it's... Every policeman in Washington is looking for Lanyard. It doesn't make sense that you can take me right to him. But I can. He's at Gregory's house at 17th and Madison. Gregory's the man you want. Michael told me to tell you. Oh, there's your answer. He told you to tell me. Well, I'm not going any place that Lanyard says he is because he'll be someplace else. I know. Madam, you can't fool the inspector. All right, I'll go. Someone's got to help him. That dame's dizzy. completes the plan. I suppose you know what's going to happen to you. I can guess. If there's anything you like, uh, shall we say, uh, your last request? I came here to find my little girl. Hmm. Very reasonable. Jenks, bring in Mr. Lanyard's daughter. As well, come along quietly. You'll be happy to know we have another guest. Yes? Miss Carson has decided to join us. Leave her out of this, Gregory. She has nothing to do with it. She'll be all right. In any event, uh, you don't have to worry about her. This just came in, Inspector. Hey, Devon. You just picked up Lanyard's car at 17th and Madison. You won't be in it. You sap, that's where the Carson girl said he'd be. Come on! Huh? 
I'm sorry, Mike. I guess I'm not such a good detective. Come here, Pat. Pat, I, um... Uh, I want to talk to him. Cry, Pat. Cry. Go on. Now. I've got to go away on a long trip, Pat. Be good. Good girl, Pat. And remember what I told you. I will, Daddy, dear. Don't worry about me. I'll be all right. Gregory, you'll see that Pat gets home all right. You're just in time. I'll say we are. If you get out of this one, Lanyard, I'll eat my hat. <laughs> Shall I get you your hat, Inspector? Get me two hats. Uh, you won't need me anymore tonight, will you, Inspector? Who are you? He's the guy from the marriage license bureau. I never did need you. Oh, excuse me. Do you issue marriage licenses? Yes, indeed. Yes, sir. Yes, indeedy. Just the man we're looking for. We can use you. Can't we, darling? Inspector, lock me up. Lock me up and without bail. What for? I don't know, but I'll think of something to confess to before morning. Take him away, Devon. Okay. Bell, don't worry. I got the keys. Mm -hmm. 